What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to create your own custom frame shapes in Adobe InDesign. So as you can see here I have InDesign already up so what I'm going to do is click on letter and I'm going to make a whole new document. Okay and now I gotta get this up. Okay so what we're going to do first is go to this tool. This is the one I was talking about, the rectangle frame tool. And as you can see, there's different options for different shapes of your frame. There's rectangle, ellipse, and polygon. So what I'm going to do is click the rectangle frame tool. And I'm going to make this sort of like a comic strip. So I'm going to go up here to the corner. I'm just going to drag one box. Like right about here would be good. Okay, and I'm actually going to give this shape an outline. So I'm going to go up here to this tool where it says zero, and that's going to help control the stroke of it. So I'm just going to click on the number to make it go up. And as you can see, the frame is bold. And actually, let's keep it at 10. So see, it already looks like a comic strip because an image is supposed to go in there. So the way that I'm going to make this irregular shape would be to add anchor points and then subtract some. So I'm going to go over here to like a few tools up this uh, fountain pen looking tool and if you click and hold on it it's going to say pen tool and then add anchor point tool delete anchor point tool and convert direction point tool so the ones we're going to be using out of this section would be add anchor point and delete anchor point so first let's click on add anchor point and this is the tool that we're going to use to define the corners of this irregular shape that we're about to make so i'm going to click on actually let's keep this corner in so let's keep this corner this corner and this corner and we're going to make this somewhat of a trapezoid kind of shape except one side will be straight and then one will be slanted I'll show you so along this line I'm going to click on this line to add an anchor point like right here because I want this point to connect with this top corner over here so now let's go back to our anchor point tool and we're going to click on delete anchor point tool or you can use the keyboard shortcut to hit the minus symbol and then I'm going to take off this point that's over here in the corner. So I'm just going to click on that. And there, we got a sort of a trapezoid shape for this frame. So let's see, let me do that again. But actually, let me make this into an actual comic strip. So I'm going to put a table in here because I want to divide it by three. In case you don't know, I'm going to show you how to add a table. So I'm going to go up here to the top menu and hit table and create table. And it's going to be a window that pops up that asks you how many rows do you want and how many columns that you want. And since I'm going to divide this by three, I'm going to make three rows. And then I'm only going to need one column, so I'm just going to hit the number one. And then once you're satisfied with that, hit OK. And there's going to be a little arrow that pops up with like a little table on it. And with that, you can click and drag to start your table. I'm going to drag it to the entire page because that's where I'm going to put these custom frames here later. And now I'm just going to resize this frame just a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to keep this table, but actually let me put this on its own layer so I can lock it in place. Okay, so the table now is in red, so that way when I add these other panels for this comic strip, I don't have to worry about this table getting tampered with or accidentally moving it somewhere else. So now we can begin to add more frames to our comic strip. So let's do the same thing that we did. I'm gonna do it again with the other side of this top row. So let's go back to our rectangle frame tool. And we're gonna drag it from this corner over here. Okay. And then go to the pen tool, click and hold. And go to add anchor point tool or use the keyboard shortcut, the equal symbol, which I keep forgetting. <laughs> And then I'm going to go up here to this part of the frame and I'm going to add an anchor point there and then down here I'm going to add an anchor point as well down here. Okay, now we go back to our delete anchor point tool over here and just delete the ones we don't need. Okay, and then I'm going to change the size of the stroke so I'm going to go up here to this little drop down menu with a number on it. I'm going to change that to 10 so that way it matches the one we already created. So 10 and hit return or enter. And there we go. There may be some resizing that you might need to do, so I'm just going to resize that. And yeah, so that way it's kind of level. 
And as you can see, this might be a little off, but all you gotta do is the same steps. So go to add anchor point tool, adjust it a tiny bit. Delete anchor point tool, get rid of the one we don't want. And yeah, see that's, that's looking a little bit better. Now what I'm gonna do is copy and paste these same frames into the next row. So I'm gonna highlight all of them, hit Command C or Control C, then hit Command V or Control V to paste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this frame right here on the right, and I'm gonna kinda make a smaller version of it just by moving it over. So that way there's sort of a small panel over here. And then I'm gonna bring this one over as well. So I'm gonna bring that. And as you can see, it overlaps this smaller frame. So all we gotta do is follow those same steps by going to our anchor point tool, our add anchor point tool. I keep forgetting the keyboard shortcut. It's the equal symbol. So we're gonna keep this point, but now let's come up here. And like right about here is a good spot. So I'm gonna click on that. Hold on, hold on. Let me use the keyboard shortcut, the minus symbol. Okay, yeah, it changed. So let's do that. Let's get rid of this other point, click, and we're good. So I'm gonna take these first two frames again, copy and paste onto the last row. So I'm gonna go up here to my rotation options and I'm gonna click this button that says flip vertical. And an easy way to find this would be to look for an hourglass because you see these two triangles and I, this little line of symmetry here, that will rotate it 180 degrees for you. So I'm gonna click that. Of course you gotta move these two frames once you click that button, but you know, it really helps. Okay. And there we go, we got our own little comic strip kind of template. And actually, I do have some images that can go into these boxes. So let me grab my folder real quick. Five minutes later. Okay, so what I have is some different colored backgrounds that I can just drag and drop into these different frames. So I'm gonna take my purple one and drag it into this one. And once you drag and drop that image in there, you can always resize it. So you can either click this little circle that's in here, and then like an orange box pops up. So when that orange box pops up, you can resize that image or reposition it however, but you may notice that you won't be able to see the exact image once you place it in the frame. So what you can do is click it and hold, and then the entire image pops up, therefore showing you what parts of that image is being shown based on the frame. So you could want just the corner of this image to be shown. You could want the center of it. You know, however you're gonna do it, you can adjust it however. And we're gonna right click. And we're gonna go all the way down to fitting. And we're gonna go to fit content to frame. So the content would be the image and the frame would be, you know, this panel that we created. And see that the image is kind of fitting into the frame. It's not gonna be kind of slanted like this line is because you see a part of that image that's hanging off here. Like, let me try to show you. But let me add these other backgrounds in here. So I'm gonna click on the orange one and drag that into any of these boxes that I want. But I'm gonna put it in here. Okay, and you can click on this circle to help resize it. And this orange box pops up. You can resize it however, reposition it and then click and hold to see the entire image as you're repositioning it to make it a little bit easier. And then to fit the entire image into the frame, all you gotta do is right click, hit fitting, and then go to fit content to frame. And then the entire image is put into this frame. Now let me do that really quickly with the other background and then I'm gonna come back to you guys. And there we go, that's what our document looks like after creating irregular size frames and importing images so that way it looks like a comic strip. But don't forget that there was a table behind all of this to help me divide this document into three equal parts. So this layer is still visible, so what I'm gonna do to get rid of it, well not completely, is to click on this little eye tool and that's gonna make it invisible. So it's not gone, it's just invisible. 
But yeah, this is what our document looks like after creating irregular frame sizes and adding images on it to make it look like a comic strip. But if you guys create comic strips using Adobe InDesign and you use this technique to help you, let me know if it did. But if it helped you in general, let me know down in the comments. And speaking of which, if you liked the video or found it useful, give it a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I